Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can put yourself into a classical painting using Photoshop. The first step is to find a classical painting that you want to put yourself into. There's a lot of places where you could download these, but I'm going to recommend nga.gov. This is the website for the National Gallery of Art, and they have a large collection of scanned classical paintings that you can download for free. The one I chose is Girl with a Broom by Rembrandt. You can see that here. Step two is taking a photo. And the most important thing when taking the photo is matching the lighting. So here in the painting, you can see that the lighting is primarily coming from one side with just a little bit of ambient lighting around it. So when taking my photo, I tried to match that lighting setup by having one large light and then just the ambience of the room filling in for the rest of the lighting. And you can see my final photo here and you can see the setup for me taking that photo here. Step three is merging your photo and the classical painting in Photoshop. That's what we're gonna do next. And if you wanna follow along with the same assets that I'm using, you can find those in the description of this video. All right, let's get started. All right, let's go to File, Open. I'm gonna open A Girl with a Broom. So this is a Rembrandt painting or one of Rembrandt's students. And I'm gonna take my daughter and put her in here. So let's go ahead, go File, Open and you're gonna see a painting tutorial photo. It's a raw file. Um, so I did some basic correction on this. If we reset to default, um, I increased the exposure and increased the shadows. Uh, I'm gonna take down the vibrance just a bit and then push it a little bit more toward yellow and green. So about like that. And I wanna make this part a little bit darker and this part a little bit brighter. So what I'm gonna do is go over here, grab the radial filter. I'm gonna go ahead and just reset this. I'm gonna make one here and make this a little higher exposure and then one down here. And for this one, I'm just gonna take the exposure down. So about like that. Let's hit open. All right, and I just need her face, so I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool to cut it out. I'm going to take the ears as well. Um, kind of helps frame the face. And here I'm just clicking and dragging to make a line. And uh, this for making curved selections like this, this is one of my preferred methods. Uh, just because I have the control to make nice curves like this, which you don't have with the lasso. And I can also go back and fix points. So by holding down Option, I can cut that curve off there. And I can also go back and hold down Option and drag these points around. So a uh, nice way to make selections. Just going to go around the hairline like that and then go right mouse click, Make Selection. Hit OK and we can add a mask there. So there you go. And then we'll turn this into a smart object. And with a smart object, um, all my changes and effects I add to this will be non-destructive. Okay, so let's place the chin where we want it to be. So right about there. And then I can do Command T for transform. And what I wanna do is make sure this is turned on. That's your anchor point. Your anchor point is right here. If you hover over it, your mouse will change and you can drag that around. Also, if you hold down option and start dragging anywhere, that's where it'll put the anchor point. Now with the anchor point there, I can hold down option and it'll scale to that anchor point. So that'll just make it easier. I have one point already where I want it to be. I can also take down the opacity here, kind of see the original behind it and then adjust Get those eyes in the right place. And also the chin line. So that looks about right, maybe a little bit bigger. Well, something like 
that I think looks pretty good. I want the hairline to be in about the same place. So kind of looking at that and I think that's good. Let's hit okay. All right, now we're gonna bring the opacity back up. Now, when you're putting a uh, photo into a painting, what's gonna do 90% of the work of making it match is your color, not any effects that you put on it. So that's an important thing to know. And we're gonna do that with a curve. So let's add a curve. I'm gonna clip it so it's only affecting my face layer. And then what I want to start doing is matching this to the rest of the image. So first off, we have too much red in the shadows. Here you can see the shadows have more of a green tone. So I'm going to go into the reds, click on this here, place an anchor point in the highlights and the midtones so those don't change, and then click here and start dragging down. And that'll take the red out of this area here. So just like that. Then I'm going to go into the green. I'm going to push the highlights more toward this green color. So let's put a mark where the shadows are so that isn't affected. And then we'll go to our highlights and start dragging that up. And right away, you can see that color is starting to look more like she belongs in this environment. Next, we're going to go to the blue. And here, because this white is not pure white, it's actually all the way down here we want to bring our white point to match that, meaning the white of the yellow. So if I bring this down, you're gonna see that's starting to have the same yellow that this has, but it's a little too strong. So maybe something like this, and then just bring up the bottom. And then finally, this black is not a pure black. So we want to adjust this black so it's also not a pure black. So maybe something like there, and then maybe bring up the red because this black has kind of a red tone to it. So we'll just bring up the bottom of the red here like this. And then back to the RGB, I think we can make our shadows just a little bit lighter. So like that, and then bring our highlights back down. To something like that. And there you go, you can see that that did so much work to get this looking like it belongs in the photo. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is just make the hairline here uh, blend in. What I'm gonna do is just add a mask to this layer here, and then go on my brush tool, right mouse click, just select a soft brush here, and just start painting out where her hair is. I'm just using a black brush on the mask for this. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now the other thing I wanna do is add some paint strokes to this. So I'm gonna select my layer here, go to filter and go to stylize oil paint and here I'm gonna keep uh, the settings to what I have here. So 3.4, 1.4, 1.8, just a tiny bit of lighting. Actually, I have that all the way off. So we can just leave that off and let's hit okay. So that just takes it out of being a straight photo. Obviously it still looks very photographic. So we're gonna go to filter, filter gallery, and I'm gonna add an angled strokes and we'll do the directional balance at 50 stroke length at 15 and sharpness at five. Let's hit okay. And there you can see that's added more of that paint look. Now the problem here is even though this looks painted, it doesn't have this texture. And also all the paint strokes are really small, whereas here you can see there's some larger paint strokes. So the first thing I wanna address is the paint strokes issue. To do that, I'm gonna go above here and we can call this paint strokes. And for this, I'm gonna use a mix brush. So select the mix brush here. I'm using this, which is one of these uh, brush tips that comes with Photoshop. Here, you wanna make sure it's on clean brush, and then you want this on. And that what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it clean the brush every time you paint. Then we're gonna have the wetness on 50. Let's do 50 there. Uh, we'll do the load. Load is how much of the original paint it grabs when you drag. So 50, let's leave that at 50. 
and then the mix is how much it mixes. So I want that pretty high. Let's make this 80. And then we'll make the flow maybe 40%. And then what I'm going to do is just start with this brush, start kind of adding a few brush strokes here. So something like that. And then I'm going to make the brush smaller and just add a few strokes here. So just a few will do the trick to make this look a little more painted. Uh, maybe I can even use it to kind of make under her eye not so dark, so something like this. And here you want to use different brush sizes and just kind of add some strokes. It's going to make it look more painted. Um, what you do here is not that important. The, the entire purpose of this step is to add a few more organic paint strokes so it doesn't all look like it was filtered. So something like that. Another thing I find really uh, useful when doing a photo to painting conversion is to punch up the eye highlights because that's something you'll find in paintings a lot. So I'm going to go back to the normal brush tool and I'm just going to select one of these mixed dry brushes, probably this uh, size 10 one here, maybe make that a bit smaller and then just select this color here and just paint a little eye highlight right where it was, just make it a little bit stronger. And then also I'm going to take this color here and just paint a little bit in the lips here. And then we'll take this down just like that. It gives it that little touch of painted look. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add some texture on top of this. Um, we have some really nice texture in the background here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go make a square that's about the size of her face, select my background and do Command J. Now I have this on its own layer. I can move it to over the face area, perfect. And then what I'm gonna do is go to image adjustments and change it to black and white. Now in making it black and white, um, and because this original image had quite a bit of reds, I can just force up the reds to make this a little bit more of the texture showing through like that. And I'm gonna do Command M or image adjustments curves, Command M. And what I want to do here is I want the middle of the curve, which is this point here, right there, I want that to be in the middle of this gray. So I'm going to take the top, just drag this until the middle of this white line crosses this black line in the middle of my histogram. That's going to give me the most gray toned texture. So now I can put this on overlay. You can see it's doing a beautiful job there putting some texture on. Problem is right now it's affecting the whole image. So I'm going to go hold down command, click on this, and then hold down shift option command to intersect with the mask like that. And then I can add this mask on top of there. Now you can see that did it, but it did not put the texture here over our paint. So now I can just go on my brush tool, go select a soft brush, and then with white as my foreground color and the mask selected, just paint in this area here where the texture was missed. So just like that. Now this texture is too strong. We can just take it down to maybe 50, uh, probably 60. Looks good. Okay, good. All right, and then finally, there's all these cracks and kind of white shiny lines across the image, and I want those to follow into her as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this original background, make a copy of it, hold down Option and click on the eyeball, zoom in so I can see the scratches on her face, and go to Filter, Noise, Dust and Scratches. And what I want to do here is take the radius and the threshold and move them up until the lines disappear. So eight, and let's move the threshold up. The higher the threshold, the less it's going to get rid of. So just move this down until you're getting rid of the lines you want to get rid of. So around eight and 22 looks good. Let's hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is option click on the eyeball, and we're going to put 
take all these layers and hide them and then put this layer on difference. Now what that's going to do is it's only going to show the dust and scratches we got rid of in the last step. So as you can see, it's mostly just the texture with a little bit more around her, obviously because that's where more of the paint is, so that's where more of the cracks are. All right, so we're going to add a layer on top of all this and do Shift Option Command E. And what that'll do is it'll merge this into a layer. We can call this Dust and Scratches. And I'm going to put this on screen. And now if we put this one back on normal, you can see we're adding those scratches on top. There is the original. Now I can turn all these layers back on, put our dust and scratches at the very top. You can see those dust and scratches are now sitting on top of her and you have these running from the original painting back into her, which kind of sells the idea that all this was part of the original painting. So there you have it. That's the before and that's the after. So there you have it. That's how you put yourself into a classical painting in Photoshop. Now, if you do do this uh, with your own images, please do tag me on social media. Um, I'm Nuclei Learn on Instagram and just Nuclei on Facebook. I really want to see what kind of images you put together. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, share this video, leave a comment. I do try to read them all. And here's some other videos that you can check out. I'll see you next time.